Welcome back everybody, Charlie Hogwood with Survival Dispatch Insider. Today we're building on a video that we did recently and we got some questions we wanted some more detail on. This is perimeter defense. So what we're looking at here as a phase of the perimeter defense as a part of our layered security plan because security always works the best in layers. This is the part where we are protecting. So we've created some area denial devices. So you'll see in the video that we're gonna put up some sheets that show blind spots and channelizing of terrain and so forth. Because if we can put the people that are coming towards our property where we want them, we can observe them with fewer people on our side of the property. So by creating area denial devices, we're making it very uncomfortable for them to take a knee or hide behind any piece of a blind spot. So a blind spot could be a tree, it could be a parked vehicle, it could be boulders, it could be landscaping, it could be cover or concealment. So if you recall, cover and concealment are two different things. Concealment could be a shower curtain. You can hide behind that, but you're not ballistically protected. Cover provides you some sort of impact protection from incoming lead. So in this case, if you've got cover or concealment outside of your property, outside of your home or your retreat, in the form of trees or barriers of some sort, you wanna make that uncomfortable for people to leapfrog up and take cover all the way up to get as close as possible as they can to your structure. So how can we do that? Well, we have a couple of methods. Uh, if you'll look, you'll see we're gonna do an overlay of some survey stakes that we put outside. These are just basic survey stakes. Got them at the, the local hardware store, 18 inches long. They come in a package and um, they're about five bucks for a box of these. So they're very inexpensive. And the idea behind these kind of come from some of the jungle trap stuff that you may see from you know, you know, war zones. Now, what we've done is when we put them on the ground out here outside of our studios, we didn't sharpen the tips down. So with the pointy end, we've actually buried into the ground and we've just left these out. If you wanna do something different, that's up to you. Now, let me make a quick disclaimer. We do not want to hurt people. We don't wanna tell you to hurt people. What we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent people from moving on our property in a time where we have minimal security on our side. So with all that said, don't say Charlie told you to go hurt people. Charlie did not. <laughs> what Charlie did say is if you make it uncomfortable for them to come up and hide behind a tree, then you can see them. If you can see them, see them, then you can deal with them as you feel like you see fit. So the idea behind this is we put these in at a sharp angle, not like this. If you put them in like this and somebody comes up, they can push them over. If you put them down too low, they can step on them and flatten them out. What you want is an angle from the direction of travel that they're coming. So if, if I'm out here, I'm the tree and you're coming towards me, I want this to be laid at an angle so if you came up real fast and ducked for cover, you would be stuck on this. So that's just the basic premise of that. And wherever you have, um, whenever you have a blind spot, as you look outside your windows at your own home and identify where those blind spots are, imagine a cone behind that blind spot of an area where you can't see, behind that tree. If you, if you form the area denial devices in the cone, then it forces whoever comes up to that tree to step out into view. So that's how we wanna look at this. So that's why when we put these up, we put these up in, uh, in groupings, so, and we started out wide, and we just kind of worked them into a cone uh, behind the tree. So that's a, a simple way to use a stake as an area denial device. The next thing that we have here that's a lot of fun is basically a spike strip. So the spike strip, what we did is we just took a piece of garden hose, and as you can see with, with our garden hose, we took some 10 penny, three inch nails, from the hardware store. So a box of these is less than $4. And that gives you a lot of nails. I believe this one holds 63 pieces. And this section of hose is used all but about three or four of those pieces. So I got about 60 nails in this small section of hose that I'm gonna say is about four feet. I could go a little wider on the spacing if I didn't wanna use that many nails. But what I've done here is created this spike strip in such a way that it is formed a triangle. So if you can see this, and we'll, we'll add in some, some better static shots later. So no matter how I put this on the ground, it will always land with the nails facing up. And if the nails are always facing up, they're doing their job. So a couple of different ways that we can use this spike strip. If I tie some cordage to the end of both ends, I can tie this to trees or anchors off the road. I can keep this straight across a driveway off of a, an avenue of approach something that a wheeled vehicle might come in on, they're gonna hit this. 
and unless they're running Hummer tires, they're not going to uh, they're not going to make it very long because this is going to put multiple punctures in each wheel. And it's also going to roll it around, so it's probably going to snag the back wheels too. So you can probably take out two to four of the wheels that are on each vehicle. That vehicle's stuck there. Now, if you're backing up every obstacle, if you think from a military perspective, every obstacle should be guarded. So if this is your obstacle, you guard it, you observe it. Anybody that hits that obstacle is now in trouble. Now you can deal with those people as you need to. You need to go out and intercept them. You need to have a discussion with them. That's great, but they're not going anywhere with this vehicle because they're probably not going to have four spare tires. So that comes in really handy. Now you say, well, I can see that. Well, if you look at the video, the B-roll that we put out there, you'll see that we stacked pine needles and leaves and straw and stuff on top of that to hide it. In that particular application, what we did is we kind of wrapped this around the blind spot of the tree camouflaged it, and anybody that were to run up there and take a knee is probably going to find a very uncomfortable position to rest. So this is actually a very low-tech uh, piece of equipment that you can use as a spike strip for anti-vehicles, area denial for terrain and landscape uh, out in your property, in hedgerows. Uh, if you step on it, it, unless you've got boots with shanks in them, yeah, it's going to go right through your foot. So we have to be really careful with this kind of stuff. So a bit of a safety note when it comes to obstacles like this. If the obstacle can cause injury, we gotta be careful with that because that can invite a lot of legal issues. Uh, we don't want those. The other side of that is, is we don't wanna step on our own obstacles. We don't wanna step on our own traps. Uh, that could be a, a medical problem that we don't wanna deal with in a situation where we even had to use these. So we definitely don't wanna deal with that because then we could be looking at tetanus, we could look at an infection. Somebody's out of the game, can't help you. So. So these are just a couple of very simple uh, area denial devices. And all I needed to put these together was an old garden hose. Um, if you need to borrow your neighbor's garden hose, well, you work that out with him. <laughs> if you need to go down and pick up a box of 10 penny nails, three inch long, very handy. And the only other tool I used was a simple basic hammer. So I don't need to make a big investment to put something like this together. So start thinking a little bit outside of what we normally would consider. We don't need all these high-tech traps and perimeter alarms and stuff like that. Sometimes we can go low-tech. It's cheaper, it's easier to hide. If this is not assembled like this, and you were worried about somebody searching through your stuff, and you just had a box of nails and a roll of garden hose that was not, uh, not uh, kind of configured this way, nobody's gonna ask you any questions. You could put this together. It took me about 10 minutes to put this all together and put it in place. So very handy, very helpful. Uh, what else could you use for an area denial device? Uh, broken rock, broken cinder block, anything that would be hard to lay on, broken glass, pieces of metal, um, just bending nails, wiring them together, razor wire, barbed wire, anything that would prevent you from taking a knee comfortably there. Even if you're wearing knee pads, you don't wanna take a knee on top of this. So think outside a little bit when you come to your area denial devices. So once again, this is Charlie with Survival Dispatch with a short tip on area denial devices.